This is a beef stew you gotta try, friends. Super easy to do. Remember, if you like the channel, subscribe, gives us a thumbs up, and don't forget to ring the bells. Gotta try that recipe, it's fabulous. Okay, friends, this is a fabulous beef stew. You're gonna love it. All right, first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get our pot ready, and um, I got some uh, ground chuck, I mean some ground chucks. I got some chuck roast right there that I just cut up in, uh, in, in, uh, in little pieces. I mean little pieces. They're kind of like a big, big bite, right? You can cut them in half with a fork when you cook. And, uh, and we uh, caramelize them. So I have a few of them. I want to show you how to do that. I got some onion that I'm going to saute. Uh, some pearl onion. I like a pearl onion. So it's nice and, uh, and, and good looking. I was looking for cipollini onion today. Couldn't get them. Cipollini. Cipollini is a, it's a little flat onion, but that big right there, it's a little flatter. And uh, it's really, really delicious. But I couldn't, I couldn't find any. So I got the, um, the, the onion right there, the pearl onion. I'm going to put them in my oil. Let me double check to make sure my pan is hot. Uh, I want it to be there about 365. And, uh, and then I'm going to saute my beef. I wanted to show you. The, by the way, you see, I got everything ready. Yeah, I got everything ready. Uh, meaning that my mise en place is ready. Everything is chopped and ready to go. I just have a few more things and the things that I, I haven't done is because I want to show you how to do it. All right. So first we're going to saute the onion. We're going to caramelize them. The onion is always number one. Eh? Always. The onion is always number one. That means it's always the first ingredient you put in. Okay. I don't care if you got a pearl onion, if you got cipollini onion, if you got a right of onion, you got, you want to caramelize them, right? So now, this is the, uh, the beef Then we're going to use. This is a chuck roast. Uh, I, I, I find that chuck roast makes the beef stew, the best stew. We're going to really, really, really caramelize them so they look real pretty, okay? Not only do they look pretty, but we're creating this uh, mala reaction where we have some caramelization of the protein. It's very important, friends. Really, really important. So salt and pepper. Don't be afraid to put salt and pepper, right? And, um, and we're going to put them in there and don't touch them. Leave them alone. Let them get golden brown, okay? Same deal with the onion. Leave them alone. Let them do their thing, right? I got everything ready. You're going to love this recipe. It's, uh, I got port wine in, the, in this recipe. I'm going to have port wine in this recipe. Then uh, I got mushrooms. And I got a bunch of vegetables also. But I'm going to put the vegetables toward the end. Remember when you do this, you heard the expression It says, Put the beef in the pan without crowding, right? Without crowding. That means don't, don't do this. Don't put them on top of each other. Otherwise, the moisture of this guy is going to go to this one, is going to go to this one, and we're going to stew. And if we stew, we don't get this caramelization right there. You see it? See what I'm talking about right there? That's what I want right there, that caramelization, okay? So look, that's why you don't touch it. You put them in, leave them alone. No, no, no different than if I took a New York strip or a filet mignon, and I'm cooking it in the pan. I put it in the pan, I leave it alone. All right, I leave it alone. So it has an opportunity to caramelize, right? The onion are gonna start caramelizing. The beef is right here. I got some mushrooms in here, friends, that we're gonna use. And, uh, and, and you know what I like to do is, uh, when I eat, I eat a mushroom, and I, I do not slice them. I cut them in quarters. If they're too big, I cut them in eight or six. So they stay nice. You see what I mean? You don't slice them. Like I said, if they're very big, cut them in six. Okay, if they're small, just cut them in quarters. It doesn't really matter. But you, want, you don't want to slice them, okay? See, look, cut them in sixes. All right, so we got a mushroom ready to go. And now let me see. Let me see how we're doing here. Okay, one more thing. Mushrooms. What are mushrooms made out of? If you took my class in my school, you know what I'm, where I'm going, right? Mushrooms are made out of what? Water. 90% water. What does water taste like? Nothing. So you want to keep your water in there, that's up to you. I'm not interested. I don't want an ingredient that tastes like nothing in my food, okay? Well, look, look. Can you get that? You see how nice that is, folks? <laughs> All right, so the beef is done, okay? All we did, let me just push this pot over there. I like this burner better. All right, 
So now, now friends, now friends, we're gonna get rid of the water in the mushroom, okay? Anything with water. I don't understand people adding water to their food, okay? If I'm gonna add a liquid to my food, or see like this pen though, by the way, look, 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 look at this pen right there, folks. See right that pen? That pen right there, <laughs> I got a little camera in here. It's, it's full of grease <laughs> from the meat. That pen right there has got some beautiful uh, burn bits right there. So you know what I do after I'm done with it? I take my port wine and I deglaze the pan. Yeah. Yes, sir. Take that pan right there and you can deglaze it, you see? And then we'll take this and we'll pour it in there. All right? So, yeah, we don't want to lose an opportunity for flavor. You know, to me, cooking is like building a building. A, a first story, you don't put a second story until the first one is ready, right? And you don't put the third one until the second one is ready, right? Okay, same deal. So now look, 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 look. I got the mushroom in here cooking, and the mushrooms are gonna be releasing their water. What would help them get rid of the water? Put it down there, let's see how many of you know that. What would help me get rid of the water on the mushroom? Anybody know? Salt. Yes, sir, salt. Right there. Right there, I got this beautiful Mediterranean sea salt that I'm gonna put on there. That's gonna help me draw the water out of the mushroom. That water, the enemy. The water is, uh, is not gonna... <laughs> you know what I find interesting? You're probably with me too, with this one. When somebody uses dry mushroom, you know, they use this beautiful dry mushroom. What's the first thing they do before they use the dry mushroom? Then put them back in water. What is wrong with you people? Okay, if you have a dry mushroom, you don't want to rehydrate it in water. Water tastes like nothing. Put it in wine, put it in broth, put it in stock, put it in something else than water. How great is that if you picked wine, uh, and let's say you picked a mushroom, and inside the mushroom is Madeira wine. Oh, you can't buy those. <laughs> but if you buy a dry mushroom, and you rehydrate them in Madeira, you got a Madeira mushroom. <laughs> well, that would be something I should do. What do you think of that idea? Let me know in your comment, okay? Now, if you could be here right now, you would smell, who is hot? You would smell onion and mushrooms that are releasing their water. Now, what's gonna happen when they release their water, friends? They become nice and small, and that's okay, I don't need the water. Have you ever chew on a canned mushroom? Don't do it. Don't ever chew on a canned mushroom. That'll give you a nightmare. <laughs> I'm kidding. You think I'm kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Now we're going to put the garlic. And as soon as you smell the garlic, friends, the second you smell the garlic, which will be about right now, we're going to put our tomatoes. Oh, anything liquid. Okay, our tomatoes. I got beautiful tomatoes. And then, you know, I'm going to put that port wine that I got right there that I got from the pan and earlier at the beef in it, right? I'm putting it in there and I'm using the whole thing right there, right? All right, so, so far, I got tomatoes, port wine, mushrooms, fresh thyme, fresh rosemary, little bit of tomato uh, puree. Let me get a spoon, little bit of tomato puree. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna bring up the heat. It looks like it's slowed down all of a sudden. Okay. Um, Oh, 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 I got tomato puree, and you know what I got also is cherry tomatoes. Have you ever used cherry tomatoes? Oh, they're fabulous. They're fabulous. Cherry tomatoes are fabulous. They give you a really, really nice texture to begin with, right? Nice texture, cherry tomatoes, look, look. But the problem is with the cherry tomato can, they got a lot of water in there, look. I don't know if you guys can see that, but look at that. They got a lot of water. See, look at this. So I do a tank of the water out of there, look. All right? If I want a water, I'll add some. We're gonna put a little more port wine. You notice everything is carefully measured, eh? Be careful. <laughs> then we're gonna put the beef Then we sauteed earlier. All right, so it's to save some time. We're gonna mix all this up. And then we're gonna put beef stock. All right? now. I'll talk about beef stock in a second. 
You want to put a beef stock, okay? All right. Now, beef stock, friends, may be one of the ingredients that you don't necessarily have access to it. You see? Not everybody's got access to a beef stock. So what I do is we make our own beef stock, of course, because we have a commercial kitchen. Not exactly easy for people to make a beef. Look how beautiful that is. Look at this. Look how nice and thick that is, folks. Look at this. See how beautiful that is? And the reason why it's beautiful like that is because when we make it, we put tomato paste in it, and we cook it for 24 hours. So not exactly easy to do at home, right? How am I, how are you going to make a beef stock you're going to cook 24 hours? So see if you can find a shop that has a beautiful beef stock. If not, what do you do? I'll tell you what you do. Oh, you're starting to look good, friends. I'm telling you. I'm coming back here more often. The food is delicious. <laughs> uh, let me tell you what you do, friends. You get yourself a, um, a um, and you know we're going to add to this? We're going to add some... Uh, I got those baby potatoes. Look, look, look. I got them cooked already. I'm going to finish them up. Look, look how cool they are. Little baby potatoes. All right, little baby potatoes. And, and I got those uh, uh, baby Brussels sprouts. I already poached them. And, and then I got those little baby carrots. Look how small they are. <laughs> so I'm, I saute them. I already poached them. So they cook, right? So I'm going to saute them in butter. I'm going to add them at the end. Because if I add them down, they're going to fall apart. They, this guy's going to cook. This is going to cook for two and a half hours. This is ground chuck. You want it to really, really, really be uh, a tender. You got to cook it for two and a half hours at a very, very, very low heat. Okay, that's the secret, okay? So, where was I? Oh, oh, yeah. Sometimes I lose track of what I'm talking about. And there's nobody here to remind me. So, uh, to, to go back to the thing. But I was talking about a beef stock. So, what do you do? Well, you buy a good beef broth. Buy a good beef broth. And, and add some tomato paste to it. If you have some extra leeks, carrots, celery, and onion, add it to it and cook it for a little while with a tomato paste. And look, it's going to give you a rich consistency like this. And you can keep it in the freezer for 17 years, approximately. <laughs> Don't quote me now. I can see people going, 17 years? We got, uh, you know, what we got with YouTube, we're good, we're lucky. We got recipe police. <laughs> I love it. I got this thing where I do a recipe on uh, where I'm, I'm peeling a tomato, a tomato con cassé, right? I'm showing people how to make a tomato con cassé. I'm putting it on the water, and I said, it should take about 10, 12 seconds. You know how many of them I said, oh, it took 23 seconds. It took 20 seconds. I'm glad they got a better clock than me. <laughs> now they got better things to do than, they, oh, my goodness, he said 12 seconds, it's 23 seconds. What's wrong with him? <laughs> Don't you have better things to do? Jesus Christ. Anyway, so look. Now, let's talk about thickener a little bit. You know, I, I, I like my beef to be a so I'm going to put on more beef stock. Yeah. I, I, okay, well, why am I putting more? You're wondering, why, what, what's the matter with him? Well, because I like it to be submerged. I like my beef to be all submerged, you see? All right, submerged. That's, you know what that means, right? Submerged, like you're submerging it. All right, so now, flour. I could have put flour when it was dry, right? Dry beef, and you put it on there. A lot of people do that. I think it's okay. I got a much better trick, though. Pay attention. I'm going to teach you something. You want to thicken something? By the way, when do you put the flour? At the beginning or at the end? Beginning or the end? Beginning or the end? Huh? Nobody knows. Yeah, and, unless they've been to my class. If you've been to my class, you know. Beginning. The flour goes in at the beginning of the dish, not at the end of the dish. If you put at the end of the dish, it tastes like glue. Yeah, glue. You know, when I was a kid, we used to make stuff uh, with flour and water, glue them together. We used to, there was glue. For, the stuff I glued 50 years ago is still glued up, okay? So when you eat raw flour, it's in there, and it takes a while to, to get rid of it. You know, I always explain people, Thanksgiving dinner. Most people, they take the dripping of the turkey, right? That, that, that turkey fat crap, and they add flour to it, and they give it to their guest. And what do they do after they eat the Thanksgiving dinner? They sit on the couch and they go, oh, I can't move. I can't move. I, I ate too much turkey. There's not enough trick to fan in five turkey to put you to sleep. It's the glue you just consumed, okay? You consume turkey fat and raw flour. Yeah, good luck getting up the couch. Anyway, so look, I was going to show you a trick, the flour, okay? Look, 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 look. If you've been in my class before, you're probably laughing right now because you know where I'm going. 
But if you've never been to my class before, you're going to wonder. So I'm going to put the flower in here. See how many of you are reacting already. You don't put it in here. If you put it in here, well, I have a huge mess, right? So pay attention. Look, look. You take a strainer, right? Take a strainer, put the flour in there. Take a whisk, right there. Right there, right there, right there. Look, look. Look. Look at this. See, you make a paste right there, right? And you bring it in. You bring the stock in. See, bring the stock in. Don't be afraid to bring the stock in. And look, 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 look. Look, look. You see what happened now? Now you got beef stock that is lightly thickened with this flour that we're going to bring in. Because you don't remember. Let me just use the spatula right here. We're going to put it in. We're going to put it in. You see, 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 see. Now let me tell you something, friends. When you have a soup, a gravy, a sauce, then you want to thicken. Now, mother, you can't do that at the end. Now, don't be doing that Thanksgiving deal I was just telling you about. <laughs> don't be doing that. Mm -mm -mm. Not, not working. So now, look. We'll go back and put a little bit more. Maybe I put just a little bit more stock on top of it. I want to get rid of it all. You see, look. And then we're going to mix it up. Now, if at the end... All right, look, see? Look, no lumps. None whatsoever. It's an easy way to do it, but you have to use the double mesh strainer, very fine strainer, right, when you do this, and you mix it up, you see, look, now, if at the end, because the tomatoes are going to release more water, you know, we're not at the end right there, you know, so it's very possible that we need more flour, because I didn't put that much flour at all, okay, it's very possible that we need more, at the end, we won't be able to add any more flour, because it has to have time to cook, so I could use, I could fix the consistency with a little bit of cornstarch at the end. But flour, of course, look, if you're a professional cook, you have a roux. You have a cooked roux, you can put that in there. But most people don't have a cooked roux. You know, trust me, I know. That's what I do for a living. I teach people. Okay? This is my thing. Okay? And I'm no, I know that most of you don't have a cooked roux at home, so you need to thicken. And, 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 and this is a perfect way to do it. So... We're going to let that cook very slowly. Bloop, 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 bloop. Very slowly, yeah? Not bloop, 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 bloop. That's no good. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Very slowly, right? We let it cook. We don't cover it. We just bring it to boil. The minute it's boiling, you reduce it, you let it cook. Two, two and a half, three hours. Depends. Depends to your meat. You'll know. When you take a, you know how I do it? I take a wooden spoon right there, right? And I go in and I take a piece of beef and I put it on the side. And if it, if it starts to fall apart, then I'm going to test it. I know it's going to be re almost ready to go. We'll season the salt and pepper toward the end, and we're done and ready to go. Let me tell you something. This, with the mashed potatoes, all, all the vegetables are it, amazing. Make extra because the freezer is beautiful. I'll be back when it's cooked, and we're going to serve it. All right, friends, where two and a half hours went by, it went so fast, especially for you guys. <laughs> and, uh, and this is cooked. And I want you to see the, uh, the thickness of the sauce, you see? It has to be covering the beef, right? So you, you, you see, look, there's sauce on the beef. If it was too liquid, it wouldn't be on the beef. It's kind of like when I make a gravy for Thanksgiving. I want it to stick on top of the turkey. Same deal here, you see? The sauce is on top of it. So what we're going to do, we're going to plate it. And, um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my serving spoon. And I, and I got myself, uh, uh, I love those big big plate, big serving plate like this. I mean, we can certainly uh, uh, use the mashed potatoes, and we can do all that. But I got those cool little vegetables that I did. You know, I did some uh, baby Brussels sprout and, uh, and carrots. And um, so I'm going to do this right there, right? And I got, the, I sauteed, um, I sauteed some, uh, some baby carrots and the, and the Brussels sprout. And I sauteed them at the last minute. They cooked, right? So we poached them already. They're down. And I just finished sauteed them in butter real quick, you see? 
just like that. Just, just really, really simple. Just let not go crazy here, right? Just like that, right? And we got a couple of carrots in there. Nice, right? And then I got those uh, uh, baby potatoes I was telling you about. So I cooked those separately. I mean, you can cook them inside if you want. The potato, but you know what I find? I, I find that if you cook them inside, they lose their colors and everything, and they're not that attractive anymore. But, but they're delicious. I mean, they'll be the same, right? It'll be almost the same. So just make sure your product is nice. It's looking pretty. We got, uh, we got mushrooms. We got potatoes. We got all that stuff right there. You know, the caramelized onion right there. Look at that. Oh, yeah, baby. This is it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go now. Look, look, look. I'll put a little bit of uh, uh, chopped parsley in here. Oh, yeah, baby. Now that's, friends, that is a beef stew a la façon Jean-Pierre. <laughs> that would be very French. For that, that's for all of you that uh, thinks I'm faking the French accent. A la façon Jean-Pierre. You have to be French to say that, okay? So, <laughs> God bless America. I love it. This is beautiful. You guys got to make that beef stew. That's a, an amazing dish and so simple to make. Remember, you're going to need a two and a half, three hours to cook it very, very slowly. I use chuck roast. Use whatever makes you happy as long as uh, it's nice and tender. And this is beautiful. Now, remember, folks, if you like this recipe, I would love you to subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to ring the bell. So next time I publish a video, you get a notification.